Yo, what's up, family? So this is Facebook family, YouTube family, Instagram family, IG family, everybody. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> this video is probably going to be in so many places. But uh, I'm excited, man, to uh, come on here and talk to y'all tonight. You know, God is doing some amazing things in this in this season, not just in my life, but really just in life in general. And I believe that if you're watching this video, then it's for you. You know, I never believe that you come across the video or you just happen to see anything, especially when it's relating to God or really the devil. The enemy is strategic by putting things on your path to distract you, but God is strategic by putting things on your path to bless you and to direct you. So, you know, today I'm just here to talk to you guys, to be a reference and to be really a vessel for God to be able to speak into your life. So, the first thing I like to do when I open up is tell you who I am. My name is Marcel. Uh, I'm from Pittsburgh, PA. I'm a life coach and a transformational public speaker. I go into schools. I do a bunch of different things. And if you haven't heard, I have a show that's called The Freedom Experience. It's on YouTube. The link is in the bio already. But uh, I'm about to pray for y'all. But I want to really tell you, man, that no matter what you're facing right now, no matter what season you're in, I want to tell you that you're coming out. You're coming out of something and you're going into something else. So anything that's been trying to defeat you, anything that's been attacking you, I know if you're like, like me, you feel the pressure. You feel the pressure of what God's doing. But you got to remember, pressure busts pipes and pressure creates diamonds. And you're a diamond in God's eye. You are so important to him. Even though it feels like you're in the fire, even though it feels like you're being burned on a daily, it's because God is confounding you and he's refining you and he is transforming you into pure goal and you know at the end of the day you don't understand the process of God and neither do I a lot of times we talk to God and we say God why this why that or sometimes we're just so del deluded in our brains we're not even able to ask why but I want to tell you that here's why because I love you God says here's why because I love you here's why because I love you if you only seen what was happening in the spiritual realm while you were experiencing all the different struggles in the physical realm you will be praising God for every single demon that's attacking you you have a thousand angels defending you do you not know that you are God's child do you not know that your father would not leave you I made a Facebook post and it said you know God of the heavens Jesus who rides on the clouds of the heavens in his majesty to defend you so a lot of times whenever I'm feeling this pressure y'all I'll start talking to God and I'll start asking him like what is this pressure about right he's teaching me to elevate above what's happening to me. So I want to speak to somebody and I want to tell you, elevate above what's happening to you. What's happening to you is not happening to you, it's happening for you. And I know we hear that a lot, but what's happening for you is you're becoming a new creation. What's happening? You're becoming a new creation in Christ, which means the old things have to pass away and the new things have to come. What's up, Mama Marla? What's up, Adam? What's up, Ali? What's up with y'all? What's up, Connie? What's up, Rosa? The old things have to pass away. The new things uh, arrive. He said, behold, do you not perceive I'm doing a new thing? I'm doing a new thing. And this is what's so beautiful about God. He doesn't need your help. He doesn't need help. He says that I put, I make waters in the wastelands, like in the desert, God springs waters, rivers, rivers out of sand. How does that happen? Because God is the God that answers by fire. God is the God who already had a plan. He says, I know the plans I have for you before you came to earth. But I really want to talk about today. Well, first, let me pray for y'all. And then I want to really get into this word about making room. I ask that you tag somebody who you know is going through it. I ask that you share this on your page because so many people are in this desperate state where they really need God and they're just looking for direction. They're looking for a confirmation. My bro said confirmation or Greg said this is confirmation. They're looking for the confirmation. They're looking for that understanding from God. And this is going to be that for them. So don't block anybody else's blessing. Make sure you uh, share this video or tag somebody in it. But Father God, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Father. I thank you, God, for life. You know, Dad, earlier today, I made a Facebook post that said, God has given you his breath, or you have God's breath in you, so be grateful. 
So, Dad, I simply want to come before you today, not even asking you for anything, but just thanking you, God, for everything. Thanking you, God, for life. Thanking you, God, for our existence, for all my brothers, for all my sisters, for every single person who will come across this video in the, in the whether it's the past, present, right now, or the future. I ask God that you would just continue to give us a heart of gratitude to be thankful. So, Dad, you said in all things, give thanks. And you said pray without ceasing. So that's what we're going to do today. Father, give me the words to articulate to your children. Holy Spirit, I invite you. Jesus, I invite you to step inside of me and speak out of me. And I ask you, God, that you will write this down in your pages, God, so that we all, everybody who's watching this, will see what was the spiritual transfer that was happening in the physical realm. In Jesus' name, I thank you and I praise you, Lord. Amen. Amen. I really wanted to speak that because one thing we don't realize is that God is always for us. You know, we think, I just did something with Allie. She's on here. She did my show called The Freedom Experience. And one thing I posted on, I just made a reel about it, and it was about forgiveness. And what she said was, even in my sin, God was still directing me. Even when I was doing wrong, even whenever I was doing things I know God was telling me not to do, he was still loving on me and still directing me. So I want to tell you that God is still loving you. He's still directing you. He is a father. He's not abandoning you just because you abandoned him or just because you made mistakes. This is not the season to give up on yourself. This is the season to wake up in your position. Realize who you are. But I really want to talk about this thing, make room. So this, this word, make room, has been spoken to me probably over the past year. And I would hear it and it would just sound like cool, like a cool cliche. Oh, make room, make room. And I heard it again and in my spirit. And I said, you know, sometimes you have to seek God. The Bible talks about, you know, seeking you will find. A lot of us just ask. He says ask, but he also says seek. Some of us just ask and we leave it there. God is saying seek, which means look into it. You know how you go look something up, see what time a movie start, see what's on the menu, see, you know, if your check came and you're seeking after it. That's how you have to seek God. So I had to seek and to discover what is this make room talking about? And what God started revealing to me is that making room is literally, I'll give you an example. It's like in your closet. If you have a closet and you have all these old clothes from years ago and you love them, some of the stuff you'd be like, I'm going to still wear that, trying to think about days and events you'll wear. And it's like, it never comes. You never wear it, right? And God is saying, I'm trying to take you on a shopping spree. I'm trying to give you a whole new wardrobe. I'm trying to bless you with more things. And I'm not just talking about physical things. I'm saying like, I'm trying to get you free from addictions. I'm I'm trying to elevate your mind and your, your finances. I'm trying to elevate you out of sickness into healing, out of cursing into blessing, out of loneliness into fellowship with other people. But God said your closet is so full of last season's clothing, last season's attire, that you're missing the opportunity to go on a shopping spree with me. And see, God is a good father. He said, if you go in there and clean out that closet and I will help you and you make room, I'll take you and give you things that you didn't even know I was going to get you things that you couldn't even imagine. So listen to this, make room. The word I want to speak about is this, and it talks about your gift. So this is what it says. And this is, um, uh, what Bible verse is this? If your gift will make room for you, hold up really fast. I believe it is. Hold up y'all. Make room. I had it right here, but um, had to find it again. Let me just do this real quick, y'all. I want to give, I could say it to you like your, your gift will make room for you, but I want to be exact whenever I quote, you know what I'm saying, what God was putting on my heart. Uh, make room. Okay, so the Bible verse is Proverbs 18, 16, and this is what it says. A man's gifts make room for him and brings him before great men. And basically, it's talking about your gift will make room for you. So when God started explaining to me about gifts, I said, well, okay, God, this is the seeking part. I said, well, what is a gift? You know, we hear gift and we're like, okay, I get it. But I said, you know, let me look it up. What is a gift? And this is what it is. It's a thing that is given willingly to someone without any payment. 
something that is given to somebody for no reason without any payment. So God has blessed you with gifts. Some of y'all are sitting on gifts and talents and books. Some of y'all are sitting on things that you know is inside of you that God's trying to birth things out of you. And he is saying the reason why it's so hard to operate in that gift on that level so that it can make room for you is because you have too much clutter. This is the season to start decluttering. What does decluttering look like? It means doing self-evaluation. It means asking yourself the hard questions. What's holding me back? What issues do I have? Where do I need to grow up? What are my insecurities? Sometimes you have to ask yourself, when, and this is the best way to do it, y'all. I'm going to tell you because you know I'm a life coach, so I just had sessions today. But whatever you feel negative about, whatever you feel fearful about, whatever moves you in a negative way, instead of just sitting in that emotion that the enemy is trying to put on you, ask yourself, why do I feel lonely? Why do I feel depressed? Why do I feel hopeless? Why do I feel weak? Why do I feel lost? You know, and as you keep asking yourself these questions and you spend time with the Holy Spirit and you spend time with God, what happens is the answers start coming to you. God is saying this is the season to start asking yourself them hard questions and start running from yourself. So ways that you can make room is spending time with God, cutting down your social media time, cutting down your social time, cutting out that time of doing things that are not intentional because every good thing isn't a God thing. I'm going to say that again. Every good thing isn't a God thing. And a lot of times people in church or people who are of God, it's like Mary and Martha. They spend so much time doing, but they don't spend no time being being with the Father, being with Jesus. God is saying, this is the season where you have to create intimate times with me. You have to seek me on purpose, which means wake up a little bit earlier. Take, Turn the TV off, turn Netflix off a little bit and spend time with me. Make room. This is how you make room. And what I love about God is he helps me. He helps me because we live in a world, y'all, where everything is pushing you towards staying busy, staying occupied, where some people, you can't even sit still for 10 seconds seconds without feeling like fluster, right? Force yourself. Sometimes I got to turn off my light, go in my room, sit there, pray, talk to God. And you know what he does? He renews my mind. He gives me a new perspective. So I want to tell you about Matthew 7 too, right? Because this has something to do with it too. He says, this is Matthew 7 and 7, ask and it will be given to you. A lot of the times we're not receiving what we're asking for because we're not making room for it. You're asking God for that new relationship, but you still won't let go of the toxic traits that put you in toxic relationships in the past. You're asking God for more finances. You're asking God for spiritual breakthroughs, for ministry, for your kids to be delivered, all these different things, for people to get out of jail. You know, whatever you're asking God for, God is saying, you're asking me for that. But then you're not doing your part by making room. So I'm here to tell you when you're asking God for something, make room. Here's an example. I could be asking God for, you know, uh, to help me operate in my gift or expand my business or whatever. Right. But it's like I'm not putting any energy into it where energy goes or where focus goes, energy flows, where energy flows, uh, something flows. You know what I mean? Basically, wherever your attention is at is which you'll create. But listen, X and it will be given to you. God is saying this is a promise. Everybody wants the promises of God. But God is saying, you don't even have room to receive my promises. What I have for you, you don't even have room to receive it because you're not operating in a space of obedience to really hear from me. But a lot of times, what's going on, Sister Shade? What's up, Yusef? What's going on, Mama Marla? A lot of times, God is saying, you are doing something, right? So this isn't to make you feel bad because you are doing something. But God is saying, spend time with me so that I can make room in your heart. Make room in your heart. Sometimes you got to forgive. Sometimes you got to say, God, I ask you to forgive me. And God, I forgive them. Move that clutter out of your heart. Move that clutter out of your mind. Move that clutter out of your attention span. See, the enemy tries to put all these things in front of you to stop you from looking up at your father. He's taking your focus away. And God is saying, get back to your first love. This is a season to get back to your first love. Get back to your first love. Get back to your first love. And this is hard to do. Right. I'm not going to hold you. I know that it's a, it's a challenge and God knows that. But this is the solution to that. X and it shall be given to you. But here's this part. Already seek. And you shall find. 
a lot of y'all just saying, God, I'm asking you to draw me closer to you. I want the will of God in my life. But, the, but you're missing the second part to that Bible verse. Seek and you will find. Then he says, even when you're asking, even when you're seeking, don't stop there. Don't stop there. Don't stop with just asking and looking up a few Bible verses. He says, knock. You know, whenever you're busy and the kids want something, candy, whatever, they knock. That means like I'm pursuing you. That means if you're hiding from me, I'm knocking on the door. I'm coming to your house. I called you. I asked you. I called you. You're not answering. Now I'm going to knock. So this means this. God is a God that likes to be pursued. Don't you like to be pursued when you're in relationships? Don't you like for family, friends, husband, wife to call you and check on you? Don't you like for somebody to pursue you to say, I'm looking for them. I'm looking for them. You like to be pursued. God is saying, listen, pursue me, son. Pursue me, daughter. And when you talk to me, don't ask about what's in my hand to bless you with. Ask me about what's in my heart to reveal to you. Don't ask me about what's in my hand to bless you with. Ask me about what's in my heart to reveal to you. He said, if you don't know what to do, ask, but don't stop there. Seek, but don't stop there. Knock. And he says, and when you knock, that's the third step. And when you knock, that means praying. That means fasting. That means worshiping. That means going to churches, getting around people who you know can help you. That means doing everything that you can do in your human power to say, God, I need you to reveal yourself to me. It's not enough to just say that little prayer and then let it go. So you want to ask, you want to seek, you want to knock. And then boom, this is what he says. And the door shall be open unto you. <laughs> Some of your promises are behind the door. You don't even know. Because you didn't make room to see. He says, some of your promises. She said, wow. She's, uh, Ali said, wow. Some of your promises are behind the door. But you're only stopping at asking. And a lot of people say, you know, ask and you shall receive. And God says, I didn't say that. God said, I didn't just say, ask and you shall receive. He said, I told you to ask, seek, knock. Somebody put that in the comment section and make sure you're tagging people in this video. Make sure you're sharing this video because this is a blessing. Somebody write that in the comment section. This is how you get God to answer your prayers. You ask. That means praying about it, talking to God about it, right? He says, seek. That means look up Bible verses on the things you're asking God for. Look up resources. Try to get in contact with people who you know have the breakthrough that you want. This is seeking. Then he said, knock, knock, knock. Somebody needs to get that in your spirit. Knock, knock. Don't give up too soon. Knock, knock. It's not too late for you. It's not, you're not too old. You didn't sin too much. You still have God's breath in your body. He is still with you. He is going to use you. He is going to use you in a mighty way, more than you'll ever know. And people for all eternity will thank you. Wait until you get to heaven and you see the people who you were able to help and reach. You don't even know who you're reaching. You don't even know who's assigned to your life. You don't even realize how big your destiny is. And you know why? Because you only ask, but you don't seek and you definitely don't knock. But today, I declare the spirit of asking, seeking, and knocking over your life. I believe that once you do this, the doors are going to be open to you. The Lord literally has been speaking to me. Your gifts will make room for you. Yes. And God is saying, this is how your spirit, or this is how your gifts and your spirit makes room for you. Because you do the internal work. You can't expect God to show up with all these promises, but you're not even taking the time to do the internal work. How do you do that? Get a notebook. Everybody who I life coach, I tell them when you come to my session, my sessions, you bring a notebook, you bring a pen and you bring an open heart ready to receive. Because what I'm about to tell you, what I'm about to say into your life is literally going to transform you. Ask, seek and knock. Listen, he said, and then the door will be open to you for everyone that asks. So it doesn't matter who you are. This is what I love about God. You don't gotta be pretty. You don't gotta be small. You don't gotta be tall. You don't gotta be short. You don't gotta be black. You don't gotta be white. You don't gotta be young, old, boy, girl. You don't gotta be none of that. 
right? You don't got to be rich, poor, whatever you want to say, your category that you fall under. God says for everyone, that means if you got breath in your body, he's talking about you. For everyone that asks me, receive it. Everybody who asks, receive. This is what he said. And he that seeketh will find. I'm going to make sure they find it. And to him who knocks, it shall be opened. But God said a lot of times, you don't even get to that space because you're not doing the internal work to make room. To allow your gifts to make room for you. God's not a liar. If you got a gift and you're using it and it's not making room for you, it's not because God is a liar. God said, let every man be a liar and let God be the truth. It's not because he's a liar. It's because you're not allowing yourself to make room so that your gift can make room for you. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. And you know, I'm speaking to myself because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, as much internal work I do, this life on earth is never over. It's always a journey. It's always more growth. So to me, I'm just saying to me, Marcel, keep making more room. Keep. So if you're somebody watching this and you've been making room, keep making more room. Keep praying. Keep asking God to help you. Keep seeking him because he hears your prayers. That's another thing. The devil is making God's children believe he don't hear their prayers. You think God don't hear you. Let me tell you how intentional God is. God hears the prayers of your heart. He hears the things that aren't even coming out of your mouth. He hears the things that you are thinking about, whether good or bad. And he is saying, this is the answer, my son. This is the answer, my daughter. Eggs. Seek, knock, and the door will be open to you. Everybody who asks, everybody who seeks, finds, everybody who knocks, the door is open. God is not a dad who rejects you. He does. He's not a father who abandons you, but Jesus is waiting. And I love the Bible verse that says he's there knocking at the door of your heart. Remember I said God loves to be pursued, but he said, guess what? If you're taking too long to pursue me, this is Jesus. I'm such a tweak for you that I'll come knocking on your heart. This video is Jesus coming to knock on your heart to say, draw closer to me. Come and talk to me for a minute. Come and spend some time with me. It says he knocks on the doors of your heart. Let him in. That means open up the door. Let your guard down. Tell Jesus you're trying. Be transparent. Tell him your hurts, your pains. Be authentic. He's not going to hurt you. He's going to uplift you. He's not going to judge you. You know, he said, I came into the world not to condemn the world, but to save the world. He wants to save you. Jesus is an incredible person. Although he's the son of God, although he is the king of kings, in his humanity as a man and as God's son, he is a wonderful person. He is a wonderful person. I don't care what anybody in church said to you, did to you, when anybody's been teaching you. He is a wonderful person. Let him in. Let him in. Let's pray real fast. Father God, I thank you, Father, that you allowed me to be here today and being used as a vessel. Jesus, <laughs> brother, Savior, King of Kings, I pray that through this message of you knocking on all of their hearts, that you would give them the grace to let you in, that you would give them the grace to make room, that you would give them the grace to say yes, to ask, to seek and to knock so that the door can be open. I pray that in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'm so proud of y'all. You know, we don't hear this enough. I'm proud of y'all. Mama Marla, what's going on, Yousef? What's going on, Scott? Ali, I want to tell y'all this. I'm proud of y'all. Anybody who sees this video, who else is on her? Harlem, you know what I'm saying? I see you. I see you, Tierra. I see y'all. Make sure you, Lucy, make sure you share this video. Make sure you tag people in this video who you know is going through it. But I want to tell you that I'm proud of you. Send this to somebody that you know is going through it. Greg, what's going on, Greg? I want to tell you I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. Listen, I know that you're fighting an unseen battle. Let everybody else judge you. Let the enemy judge you. He's jealous of you because you're a child of God. But I want to tell you that I'm proud of you just for showing up today just for taking a breath for fighting through the enemy's tactics to destroy you i'm proud of you 
Keep it up. Keep it up. We're going to get to the other side. Thank you, brother. Hallelujah. Of course. It's a privilege. It's an honor. I honor you guys. I love you. And remember, make room. Make room. It's the season to make room. So I love you. I honor you. I appreciate you. Larissa, I'm proud of you. Tierra, I'm proud of you. Anybody else on here, I'm waiting to see y'all y'all comment so I can tell you I'm proud of you. Whoever pops up. I love y'all so much. I appreciate everybody who shares the videos, everybody who watches the shows on YouTube, follows me on all the social platforms. I want to tell you that I am grateful. And my sole purpose of doing that is to speak life into your life. I sacrifice myself to be obedient unto God, to stay in a place where I can hear his voice so that I can come and present his wisdom, his instruction. You know, every day, Scott, I'm proud of you. You know, every day there's a Bible verse that God has me say when I wake up. Tay, I'm proud of you, bro. I'm proud of you, Tay. Uh, keep it up, bro. Keep it up. Keep using your gift. I'm proud of you. There's a Bible verse that God has me say every single day. And he says that the sovereign Lord has given me a well-instructed tongue to know the words that will sustain the weary in due season. So every day God gives me, he says he wakens my ear up morning by morning, teaching me like one being instructed. God instructs me. The Holy Spirit instructs me in my sleep. God comes and talks to me in my sleep. And you know what I do? I write them Facebook posts. Y'all be seeing them. All of those posts are coming straight from the Father. He speaks to me. He instructs me. And then I come and share with y'all. So, Wendy, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of y'all. So, share this message. Put this on your page. Share it. Do not be shameful of God. God said, if you're ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. Jesus said it. So don't be ashamed of talking about God. He's the only thing that really matters in this world. But I want to tell you, continue to walk out this life in faith and continue to make room. Because your gift, whatever God's given you to bless this world with, you're going to do it. I declare you're going to do it in a mighty way. Make room. X, seek, and knock. 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 Father, where you at? I've been praying to you. Where you at? I'm asking. I'm seeking. I'm looking up stuff. I'm calling people. I'm reaching out to you. Knock. He promises he will answer. I love you so much. Father God, bless your children tonight. Cover them, Father God, in the blood of Jesus. Cause them, give them the grace to seek you, to ask you, to seek after you, to knock on your door, God. Let them uh, open up the door to you, Jesus, as you knock on their hearts. Open their eyes, God. I come up against every demonic attack, every evil spirit, Lord, every spiritual wickedness in higher places that's creating atmospheres of doom, every spirit of death that's trying to kill your people, every spirit of fear that's trying to destroy your children. I come up against it in the mighty name of Jesus. I loosen the host of heaven to go and break those strongholds, go break those illusions, go break those different situations and atmosphere that the devil is trying to do to destroy your children, Father God. I loosen angels, ministering angels of love ministering angels of joy, ministering angels of healing for bodies that need to be healed, minds that need to be healed, wisdom, Father God, revelation, insight, Father God, money, financial blessings, God. You said that you take care of everything we shall not want. You supply all of our needs. So any need they need, God, mentally, physically, emotionally, financially, relationally, situationally, spiritually, I ask God that you would meet their needs for me. I'm using my faith, God. I'm using my faith in coming to you, bringing them to the throne, asking you for grace over their life. I thank you so much, Dad, that you are so real. Help your children. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And that's the word for y'all tonight, man. Share this. I love y'all. Y'all will see me soon. God bless you. Oh, yeah. And I got <laughs> my boy is a live musician. So the music you hear in the background, he's actually playing that live right now. That's not just music playing. He's using his gift. It is making room to him. We are creating a canvas that you'll see in heaven that you'll be a part of. 
because as he played and as I spoke, because I'm in his I'm in his, his office where he got the whole band set up, his whole studio, as he's playing and I'm speaking and you're, you're listening and you're agreeing, we're creating an art piece that will be remembered forever in heaven. So thank you. Thank you for being a part of that with me. I love y'all. God bless you. I love you so much. Use your gift and make room. Peace.